That's creepy, right? <laughs> hey YouTube, welcome back to day 19 of our 30 day spooky challenge where we are aiming to create a Halloween themed island. We have three simple rules to follow. We need to start and finish a new island in 30 IRL days. Time travel is okay and there is no DLC or Nintendo Switch Online allowed. As always, I hope you have an awesome day. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy. So here we are again, but this time with playing in the nighttime, I thought we'd have a look to see kind of what Moriween is going to look like at night. Um, we haven't made too many change. What? The scooter's got a light. That's really adorable. <laughs> we haven't really changed too much around the island. We've just been grinding the gyroids and the fossils to finally find one of these skulls because we will today be building a or aim to build some kind of graveyard in the top corner of Moriween. So this is how the spooky, creepy mansion is looking right now. It doesn't really look like a mansion, but <laughs> we might get there at some point. Uh, but basically, we're gonna kind of make this area over here a bit of a graveyard, cover it in weeds, create some dense forests, and maybe just focus on this area here. But we also have free space here now because we have moved the museum. So we've got some space here to work with. And I want to do something kind of fancy with the rocks. Maybe more on that later. Okay, we're going to do something fun first. We are going to collect all the rocks, which isn't... Oh, yes, actually, this reminds me. Look, I've been working on a Halloween path. Um, I wanted to see what it looked like at night before I did anything more. Um, so I do have some troubles when it comes to creating paths because I'm colorblind. <laughs> but this is what it's looking like at the moment. I basically created a center tile, duplicated it, and now I'm cutting down each side to create the standard path models that everybody uses. I wanted your opinion before I continued with it and to see what it looked like at night. It actually looks better at night than it does during the day, but I wanted to gauge the colors. If I just bring this up for a second. So this is the color scheme I've gone for. Um, so I really don't know if it works. I was trying to go for a dark Halloween-y path that we can convert to like a candy path if we wanted to with like bright oranges and stuff. But I didn't want it to be black because then it kind of looks weird. So if I can have your thoughts on this path, I shall continue or start again. <laughs> anyway, where were we? Yes, we are going to collect the rocks, which isn't the fun part, but then we're going to smash the rocks. Oh yes, and just in case you're wondering why I have so many bell trees, it's because I landed on a Capin Island and all the fruit trees were bell trees. And because there are only 1,000 bell bags, I decided to keep them instead of just taking them. Because I thought maybe we could make like a cursed area somewhere around the island where the money is cursed, like a little money forest or something. And I only went there because a few people have said they're a bit worried we're not gonna finish the island. And honestly, so am I. So I've been doing a little bit of extra grinding between episodes, but nothing design-wise, just grinding resources, collecting bells, and just the smaller things that kind of lets us do a bit more in each episode. Anyway, back to the resource grind. Okay, we'll collect the rocks first and then come around and smash them all. Also, check this out. Spooky. That definitely looks spooky, doesn't it? with the light. A few people said to put a light on the ground in the comments. Genius, absolutely genius design trick. So thank you for that. Okay, this is the last rock we need to smash before we smash. Okay, here goes. We have six fruit powers and now we need to smash six rocks. Ouch, it always hurts when you do it. <laughs> Here we go, the last rock. Just grab this money tree real quick. Okay, so we need to clear this area of trees. So we'll just start with the peach tree. We're gonna take them all down. We won't throw them away or anything because we're definitely gonna need to reuse them around the island. Maybe even back in this area, but for now we'll just clear them and we'll just take this one out for good measure. Okay, we have a lot of land to work with now. And what we are creating is some kind of elevated rock garden. Basically, we're gonna force spawn the rocks in this area, but I thought it'd be cool if we did them each on their own raised cliff. 
I had the idea while we were making Jack's face because I ended up having to terraform around a rock. So what I mean is basically create a platform like this. So it's going to be a three by three grid and then hopefully we will get the rocks to spawn on top of it. So one rock on each platform and then make kind of a rock garden or some sort of circle. Um, so it mimics like an ancient structure um, and yeah, and then we'll just see how it looks. If it looks really terrible, we can just demolish it. So I'm going to go ahead now and build the rest. Okay, so we're just building the last one now. It might make a bit more sense what I'm thinking, but basically I just moved this one down a little bit because we're creating a circle. I thought a circle of rocks would be much better than kind of random. We might regret not doing it in a circle, but basically in the center of each one of these platforms, I'm hoping to spawn the rocks and it will act as kind of a worshipping ancient structural area. We can try and make it as spooky as possible with lights and weeds and bones and things like that. Okay, I think we need to go and buy the sand path as well. As long as we've got enough nook miles, we should have. Here we go, sand path permit, 2,000 nook miles. Ouch, luckily we have exactly 7,000. Thank you, Isabel. Okay, now we can head back to this bit we're working on. And I'm just going to put a sand tile in the center of each one of these. And this doesn't really mean anything. This is purely because I've regretted it in the past when I've turned my rock gardens into like a zen area. And I know we probably wouldn't have a zen area on a spooky island, but just in case, I don't want to have to move the rocks again. So in case we want to turn this into a zen area later on in the future, I'm just going to put a dash of sand on each one and basically everywhere there's a sand tile here the rock will spawn that's the idea we will do that i'll do that overnight because it's a long process to get the rocks to spawn okay next up we need to start decorating the graveyard area and and filling out the kind of the mansion grounds so i'm going to grab some things from my storage real quick okay just had to grab some resources from these storage because we're going to craft some stone tablets we don't have any gravestones yet or the grave shrines or anything like that so we're gonna to have to make do with what we've got which is i guess half the challenge and, and we're going to craft some of these stone tablets and kind of use them as graveyard gravestones Okay, that's th uh, we crafted four actually. Uh, we crafted four stone tablets to use as grave stones. And now we just need to grab a balloon from the shop. And you'll see why in a minute. Hopefully there's a balloon in here actually. I don't think they're in here every day. Oh yeah, we've got a green balloon. That will do. A red one would have been better, but we can change it later. Do you know what? We could use this uh, trash can as well. Thank you, Timmy and Tommy. Okay. Oh, Maury, do you ever feel just like crying? Uh, sure you do. Everyone feels sad sometimes. When you feel like you need to cry, don't hold back. Use your reactions just like this. Look. I learned the sorrow reaction. I weep for tomorrow. Yeah, we deserve an Oscar for that performance. Oh, actually, do you know what? We need to grab some more trees first. It worked. Look, Sandy's holding an orange net. Yay. <laughs> oh, Sylvia's holding an orange net as well. Awesome. See, it did work. It was worth the grind. Okay, so we're just going to take some pine trees. We will, of course, replace these once we go to an island or something. But just for the purposes of designing the man haunted mansion area, we're just going to steal them from this side of the map. This is what the museum looks like, by the way. It's like a perfect fit. Um, we're just going to drop these fossils off here so I can have some space for some more trees. And we're going to steal the museum trees. You'll get some back, I promise. Maybe. Okay, two more trees. We'll take this one and this one. Okay, so we need to think about where we're going to put the um, gravestones first. Can we jump over here? It would be really convenient if we could jump over here. Okay, we're just going to remo <laughs> remove a fence piece while we decorate. Okay, so where are we going to put some graves? I'm thinking they're just going to be random. One here. One here. Maybe one in the center somewhere. Maybe one in front of this tree. Okay, actually I'm thinking of putting one over here. Okay, now I was thinking how to make these look a bit more like graves. And the only thing I can think of until we actually have like some grave items is to use a path. So we're going to use the dirt patch. I think, and I'm hoping it will look a bit like a grave, so... I mean, it doesn't look too bad, actually. That's okay. 
Let's remove that while we're working. Okay, we need to move this grave forward. I mean, at least we've got this. This is a Nook Miles um, item. So it's lucky we had it, really. Otherwise, we would really struggle to make some kind of graveyard. But let me know if you have any other ideas for graveyards. I don't know if there's any better items. The, the thing with this challenge is we can do as much or as little as we like, but we are really limited to how many recipes and how many items we actually are able to find. Um, and since I learned how to cook, I, all I keep getting is the cooking recipes, which takes away the chances of finding the items. But we do have some cool things. Actually, the glowing moss statue would be a really cool one for this area. Maybe we could craft that and add that to it. But yeah, I feel like it's a pretty good, pretty good item. Okay, so that kind of looks like some gravestones, maybe. Now let's plant some more trees. We need one in the entrance. Probably both sides, actually. We, we, we like to be symmetrical. How many trees have we got to work with? Okay, we've got eight trees. There we go. Might as well put the trees in as we're going. Okay, I really like, I mean, I really like having lots of trees, but it's an absolute nightmare to navigate. <laughs> Maybe we should make it more dense towards the back here. We can always move them if we don't like them. It's a real shame we can't put... The trees on the edge of cliffs. I mean, we can, but it involves doing a little glitch. But this is okay, I think. For now, this is okay. Uh, okay, we need to put one more tree in here somewhere. Okay, so that kind of works. We've got some grave yards. We've got some dense forest. And the next thing is to literally cover the entire thing in weeds and maybe some maybe we'll throw some wildflowers in there at, at a later date um so this might take a little while but i'll quickly go around and drop some weeds everywhere this is going to do nothing for our island rating but just to have the weeds give that extra overgrown look it'll be worth it okay that's this area covered in weeds looks a little bit messy now but i think in a few days when these fully grow, it's gonna look really cool. And we've just got some left over to place on this gravestone. There we go, we actually use 97 weeds. Wow, that's just destroyed any island rating we have. Um, but it will be worth it. We're just gonna put the fences back real quick. Out of bounds, you do not want to go in there, it is haunted. Okay, and the next thing that I thought we could add here, we will put more trees here, but what is more spooky? Than a tricycle with a balloon. A tricycle with a balloon at a haunted mansion on haunted grounds. That's creepy, right? <laughs> and I thought we could probably put like a log stool out here just for the sake of putting some things out of the storage and in here. We also have a spinning wheel, which is also kind of a creepy item. So I thought we could just put that next to the log there. Now, this is, okay, it's not done yet. We need more trees and maybe put some paths down when we finalize our path. But I think this is looking really cool. Especially with the, the handmade graves. You definitely do not want to go there. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Oh, yes. I forgot I found a haunted painting from Nook. Uh, from Red, sorry. I think it's the haunted one anyway. Yep, her eyes are, her eyes are closed. So at nighttime, this painting goes to sleep and then when it gets light again its eyes open so this is definitely a good fit um do you know what we should probably put that at the mansion as well there we go a haunted painting in a haunted mansion that's just almost too perfect okay we need to start thinking about designing the front of the museum as well um, so I was hoping to get some slopes or some stairs leading up to the museum. So we might not be able to pay them off now, but we may as well get it started. Hey, Nook. Bridges and inclines. Hmm? How can I help you? We want to build a incline. Now, we kind of have to go big for the museum, don't we? Um, yeah, I think we're going to go for the stone staircase. We'll be a bit... Oh, we can... actually, we can nearly do one. We can nearly pay for one. We'll do the stone staircase. Excellent. In that case, let's settle on a location next. Use the incline market kit I've placed within your pockets to set aside some land for our incline projects. Okay, so we're gonna make our way back to the museum. And uh, we're probably gonna have to do a tiny, tiny bit of terraforming because we'll put the stairs on the second level, I think, and start building away from the museum. So yeah, we're gonna have to do a little bit of terraforming. So we'll start by filling in these cliffs, I think. We probably want a little area to work with. 
It might be as simple as doing that, you know. Okay, we're going to move these trees while we do a little bit of terraforming and stair placing, I guess. Maybe we could move these to the mansion as well. Okay, so this is where we're going to place the stairs, hopefully. We're going to do two because the museum needs a grand entrance, doesn't it, up to the museum. Um, so I think that should be okay. Let me imagine it. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, oh, actually. Oh, yes, we can fill that corner in there, can't we? Yeah, okay. I picked a spot for an incline. That's a setup for the island. Okay, nice symmetrical, soon to be grand entrance to the museum. Maybe we'll divert the river a little bit and then have another double slope down the bottom there. Let's go and put these trees at the museum. On the way, we're just gonna grab this skull. Oops. Ooh, maybe we should plant the gyroids in the graveyard because they are associated with um, like graves and things. So I'm thinking these skulls should just be placed random near a random tree or something like that. There we go. Do you know what? I, I think we should move the gyroids in here. Back we go. Oh, Gulliver. Hey, we'll deal with you later. But yes, I'm thinking of planting all the gyroid fragments, or at least some of them, on the grounds of the haunted mansion near the graves. Let's see how many we can plant. Okay, we need to try and make it look random, so I guess we're just going to have to pick a spot and plant a gyroid. We'll see how many we can kind of fit in. Okay, we've planted 10 gyroid fragments in the graveyard area as well and, and drop the skull there and the reason for this is because the gyroids in real life they're associated with death so it makes sense to put them in the ground near the graveyard and they're kind of cool it's just something unique to add to this area as well um so i think i think that's pretty cool and i think to finish we'll just drop the last of the cedar trees i keep calling them pine trees the last of the cedar trees that we dug up from the museum. We'll just place them here now, just again, just to get them out of our pockets. And there we go. We have a very woody, overgrown uh, graveyard area slash haunted mansion with a creepy tricycle and balloon, which yes, it is creepy. And of course, a haunted painting whose eyes will be open when we play during the daytime. Uh, so yeah, I can just hear a balloon as well. No, <laughs> but there we go. I think that about wraps up this episode. We've actually done quite a lot. We've built this haunted mansion area and overgrown out of bounds graveyard area, which I just think is that might be the coolest thing I've ever built in Animal Crossing. And of course, apart from the chores, we've started the next build, which will be some kind of elevated rock garden ancient worship ground that hopefully we'll be able to finish tomorrow so let me know your thoughts on this and don't forget to let me know what you think of the path that we are halfway through uh, designing there i think it looks okay at night but i could be completely wrong let me know if it needs to be darker different colors um, i could really use some help on that that would be great uh, but yeah thanks for watching i hope you're enjoying this series i hope you enjoyed this episode thank you of course to the patrons and channel members and i'll see you tomorrow Bye!